G'day, I'm Goose and welcome to Scoop. This week, can games predict scientific discoveries? How many different ways are there to play a Nintendo Switch? And can bees play video games? God, I hope not. Then I'm out of a job. Oh, no! You got out of my job! Go away, bees! I host this show! Ah! Roll titles! Get buzz off. All right, first up, the news. Microsoft has announced a new game subscription service called Xbox Game Pass, which will launch later this year. The service will allow users to download and play as many games as they want from an ever-changing library of over 100 Xbox One and 360 titles for a small monthly subscription fee. Hmm, sounds like a software smorgasbord. Next up, space simulation game Elite Dangerous has managed to predict a recent scientific discovery from NASA. The game uses a lot of science and real data to generate a fully explorable version of our Milky Way galaxy. Turns out that they ended up creating a solar system almost exactly like Trappist-1, the exciting system with seven Earth-like planets that NASA recently discovered. It even created it in pretty much the same spot. Users also recently discovered alien life, so, you know, that could be real too. Next up, bees. Gamer bees. Yes, researchers at the Queen Mary University of London have released the bees. I mean, released the results of a study that involved teaching bees to play a kind of soccer. Using a fake bee, the team taught a real bee how to drag a ball into a goal for a sweet, sugary reward. The bee was then able to teach its fellow bee buddies how to play, and they even got better at the game. Adorabuzzle! It won't be long before bees are kicking our butts at Rocket League. Next up, from a hive of gamers to just one's quest to complete them all. All the NES games, that is. Piotr Kaiselzuck, a streamer and speedrunner of many games, has spent the last three years playing through every single game ever made for Nintendo's first major home console. That's 714 games all up, which included having to learn piano to finish Miracle Piano Teaching System. the worst use of three years of your life? Maybe not the best either. All right, that's it for the news. Time to get our hands on some hectic hardware. So finally, a Nintendo Switch in the Spawn Point Scoop office. And I thought I'd take an opportunity to look at some of the different controller methods that you can use with a Switch, as well as what to expect when you first boot it up. So first of all, as you can see, we've got the unit sitting here in the dock. Now this is how it sits if you want to be playing up on the TV. But to play on the TV, you'll need a controller or some form of controller. And there's a couple of different options. So the first one, which is quite cool, is that you can actually remove the Joy-Con controllers from the side of the Switch. Now these feel a bit weird because it's basically like holding two parts of a controller. It's like having a Wiimote and a nunchuck. While you're playing that way, you can also add on these little dongles which have a wrist strap on them and they also have higher shoulder buttons as well. And what that does is it kind of gives the Joy-Con a bit more surface area to grip onto. But if using two separate controllers feels a bit weird, you can actually take the Joy-Cons and put them into this, uh, which is the Joy-Con grip. Now, this comes with the console as well, and you actually have the ability to slide in two Joy-Cons into the controller and then voila! you have a more traditional looking controller. I actually really like the Joy-Con grip. I think it's a bit clunky, a bit ugly, but it's also kind of cute and it's very Nintendo. Uh, the last option is the Pro Controller and this one's sold separately and does feel a lot more like a traditional Xbox or PlayStation controller. It's a lot heavier, it's a lot comfier in your hands, but it does lack a bit of the personality of the other controllers. Speaking of personality, the one I think is the most exciting is taking the Joy-Con controllers off and actually putting them back on the unit and once you do that, you have the ability to undock the unit. And then you've got a handheld console, which I think is the most exciting thing about the Switch. I think this is how I'm going to probably play it the most. It feels really sturdy, almost like a giant PlayStation Vita. You've got a really nice screen, and then you've got the same controller setup that you've had earlier. And then when you put the unit back in the dock, it pops up on the TV and you've got your home console again. But now that we've looked at all the controllers, let's jump into the interface and see what happens when you boot up a Switch. So straight away, it's pretty clean. There's not much going on there. You've got a bunch of icons down the bottom. So we've got news, Nintendo eShop, album, controllers, system settings, and sleep mode. Uh, at the moment, I think all the news is how to use your Switch, uh, which is quite helpful. Oh, I see, here's a problem. If you put the Switch back in with the standout, you might snap off the stand, which this cat is clearly concerned about. 
next to that we've got the eShop, which isn't connected yet. We need an update for that, but once we get into that, I imagine that's where you're going to download a lot of games onto the console. Next to that we have the album. Uh, so there is a little capture button on the controller, so when you're playing games and you see a particularly lovely screenshot or a, a vista that you want to take a photo of, you can press that button. Next to that is the controller's icon. Obviously, there's a lot of different setups for controllers, so I think there's going to be some pretty intricate settings to make sure you know which controller you're using, which ones are paired. I think you can actually pair up quite a number of Switch systems. For the moment, we've just got our little two Joy-Cons plugged into the Joy-Con group, uh, and no one to play with. Hmm. System settings. We all know what system settings are. Brightness, lock, internet. Ooh, Amiibo. Cool. Uh, and you've got obviously your users there, so if you want to add new users, if you've got more family members, you can add them there. Up the top, we can put in our profile, so let's jump in there and do that. Ooh, we can customise an avatar character. I'm a big fan of uh, Wind Waker Zelda, so I'm going to play as Wind Waker Link. So back into the main menu, you've got all these blocks up the top, which is obviously where all the games are going to go. At the moment, not many games there, uh, just one, two, Switch. But hopefully in the future, we'll have a heap of Nintendo games in there. Zelda, a bit of Mario, always nice. And that's pretty much it. You've got an icon at the top to show you how much battery level is in your controller. You've got a Wi-Fi signal, and you've got the time. It's very clean, it's very simple, but I think that's what Nintendo are going for. They're a game console here that is just for games. There's no apps, there's no movie streaming. I think they're just going to focus on the games because that's what Nintendo does best. All right, well, that was my first look at the Nintendo Switch and some of its controllers. Now I just need to find someone to play with. <sighs> so lonely. Well, that's it for this episode of Scoop. Remember, Spawnlings, you can keep sending in your video game artworks for us to put up on the Spawn Point Scoop set. But this week, I'd like to set a little bit of a challenge. As it is the launch of the Nintendo Switch, I want to see your best artworks of Nintendo characters. However, the twist is, I want you to switch the bodies with the heads. Yeah, some weird stuff, guys. I want to see Donkey Kong Marios, some Peach Luigis, some wacky creations, whatever you can come up with. You can email and snail mail them in here. Looking forward to seeing what you guys send in. Hmm, maybe a Yoshi Bowser. Oh, that's getting too weird. All right, until next time, goose out. Oh no, he's back. No, you can't have my job. I won't leave. No, no, no.